So you've heard the news. El Salvador is now one of the safest countries in the entire world. The weather is always amazing and we are embracing Bitcoin. So you may find yourself asking, should I move to El Salvador? Where would I even live? How much is the cost of an average three bedroom apartment? What does it actually cost to live in El Salvador? Hey guys, it's Carol. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how much it costs to rent a home here in El Salvador, specifically in the greater San Salvador area. And spoiler alert, it's probably more than you think, depending on the amenities and location. Because as a general rule, the further away you go from San Salvador City, the less expensive your rent will be. With, of course, the recent exception of beach rentals. And that's a whole other video. Let me know down below if you want more information on beach rentals here in El Salvador. So with that said, why would you choose to live within the San Salvador city limits? Well, for the same reason we did for so many years. San Salvador is where the majority of the shopping centers, malls, hospitals, embassies, bilingual schools, universities, business centers, jobs, and well, people are in El Salvador. And commuting in El Salvador is no joke. Traffic is a real deal here, especially if you have to travel during peak traffic hours. Commuting to the city every day for work or school will cost you in gasoline and time. And while there's a vast variety of rentals available within San Salvador, in order to compare apples to apples, I'm gonna give you a realistic idea of what you can expect to pay for rent for a three bedroom home within San Salvador based on current Facebook marketplace listings. And talk to you about the different locations within San Salvador and what you might expect to find in these areas and why rental costs vary so much between these locations so that you can find your perfect home here in San Salvador. Now with all of that said, the number one most important thing I have done to make El Salvador feel more like home since moving here is to improve my Spanish. And one of the easiest ways that I have found to do that is with the help of today's sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is one of the world's top language learning apps. Their intuitive lessons help you learn a language through real life conversation about travel, business, relationships, and food. Ella no quiere café. Ella no quiere café. Can't relate. Quiero comer unos churros. Ooh, that I can relate to. Voy a querer un pan dulce. Voy a querer un pan dulce. Oh, see. Sí. Babbel is every explorer's must have travel accessory for a reason. Their bite sized lessons give you the confidence to speak a foreign language wherever you go. Whether that be to purchase food at the local grocery store or order your dinner from the local restaurant all by yourself. So go ahead and see the world and stop to say hello. Babbel has multiple subscription options, including a lifetime subscription, as well as podcasts and an option for live classes. So I know you're gonna find the option that's perfect for you. Go ahead and click on the link down below in my description or pinned comment to get 60% off of your subscription and start speaking a new language in less than three weeks with Babbel. So let's get to know San Salvador and take a look at some rental comps in the area. This is San Salvador. And for simplicity, we've divided it into six quadrants to give you a better idea of what to expect to see and pay in different areas of the capital city of El Salvador. First up, we have Soyapango and Ilopango. The first thing to know about this area is that it is heavily populated. In fact, it is the most densely populated area in all of San Salvador, with over 6,400 people per square kilometer. That's a lot of people. There are not a lot of apartments available in this area. You're gonna find a lot more homes for rent. And because it is so densely populated, the homes in this area, as well as the yards, are a bit smaller per square footage. Finding parking may be an issue, as well as some pretty intense traffic. However, the upside to living in a densely populated area is the large sense of community and access to many things close by. There's gonna be mercados, tienditas, street vendors, and pupuserias everywhere. What you won't find in this area are bilingual schools and certain department stores that you'll find in other areas of San Salvador. What you can expect to pay in Soyapango or Ilopango for a three bedroom rental is anywhere between $200 and $700 a month. One thing to note is that El Salvador uses the US dollar as its national currency, as well as Bitcoin, but most landlords here will require that you pay your rent in the US dollar, or at least the equivalent, because Bitcoin rates do still fluctuate from day to day. Next up, we have Mexicanos and Ayutux de Peque. 
This area has many similarities to Soyopongo and Ilopongo. It is also a heavily populated area. In fact, it's the second most densely populated area in San Salvador, with just over 6,200 people per square kilometer. There's also a large sense of community here, and you'll find local vendors, pupusarias, and tienditas everywhere. But there's also the added benefit of being closer to the business centers and shopping centers nearby. Traffic here is also a little bit less congested, and square footage a little bit more. There are both apartments and homes for rent here, but not many private residential areas. Fun fact, Carlos actually grew up in Mexicanos. And according to current Facebook Marketplace comps, you can expect to pay anywhere between $200 to $800 a month for a three-bedroom rental here. The third area we're going to take a look at is San Salvador Centro. This area is a little less densely populated, with 4,700 people per square kilometer. It's also closer to the downtown San Salvador Historical Center, and it's surrounded by government institutions, national hospitals, and courthouses. And with the resurgence of the historical center, you'll find a mix of older homes and newer construction in the area, as well as many cafes and cultural experiences. But what you won't find are malls or nightlife. And according to the current comps on Facebook Marketplace, you can expect to pay anywhere between $300 to $1,200 a month for a three-bedroom rental in this area. Next up to bat, we have Escalon and San Benito. Technically, Escalon is part of the above-mentioned San Salvador Centro, but due to its similarities with San Benito, we've grouped the two together. In the past, this was a residential area for the uber-wealthy of San Salvador, and as a result, there are some pretty large plots with very grand homes. Over time, many of these larger homes became banks, office buildings, embassies, or even apartment buildings. In fact, it's very common to find a home in this area listed for residential or business purposes. Though apartments are also available in this area. You'll also notice most jobs, bilingual schools, private hospitals, and embassies are located in this area as well. It's also a major hub for call centers and businesses, as well as cafes, bars, and hotels. And because it's considered a business hub, you're likely to run into some pretty extreme traffic here. And you don't tend to find people walking around much. People get around by cars or bus in this area. And according to current Facebook Marketplace comps, a three-bedroom rental will cost you anywhere between $900 and $2,400 on average. Next up, we have Antiguo Cuscatlan and Nuevo Cuscatlan. This area is not nearly as crowded as some of the other areas in San Salvador, at only 1,800 people per square kilometer. It's one of the newest developments in San Salvador and continues to grow daily. This is where you'll find the U.S. Embassy and a large population of the expat community. There are multiple shopping centers with luxury brands, bilingual schools, restaurants, and a strong nightlife. There's also Price Mart. And it's common to find people walking, biking, or jogging down the street. Homes here tend to have the most luxurious amenities. Hot water, AC, pools, gyms. You may even find a bathtub. And according to current Facebook comps, a three-bedroom rental here will cost you anywhere between $900 and $3,000 a month. Last but definitely not least, we have Santa Tecla and Merliat. This is the least densely populated area in all of San Salvador at only 1,200 people per square kilometer. In fact, both Santa Tecla and Merliat are technically not part of San Salvador, but actually La Libertad. In fact, Santa Tecla is actually the capital city of La Libertad. It has its own historical city center and history dating back to the 1800s. But over the past 40 years of construction and development, it has now connected to San Salvador by infrastructure and is commonly considered to be part of the greater San Salvador area. So we're including it here. This area is sort of a mashup of what you would find between Antiguo Cuscatlan and San Salvador. It's literally where old meets new when it comes to construction and culture. There are many restaurants and shopping malls, as well as the easiest access to the beaches of any of the areas in San Salvador. We once rented a house in this area, and I absolutely loved the character, but it didn't have a yard, and we had dogs. And here you will find a wide variety between costs and sizes of rentals available, more so than any of the other areas in San Salvador. In fact, according to Facebook Marketplace, a three-bedroom rental in this area can cost you anywhere between $500 to $3,000 a month. 
I hope this helps give you an idea of what you could expect to pay for rent in different areas around the capital city of San Salvador. Now, it is important to note that this is just a glimpse into the rental market here. You can find all sorts of different homes, much grander homes for a lot more money, or smaller homes for a much more economical rate. But I do find that more often than not, many people seem surprised to find that rental costs in San Salvador can be comparable to rental costs in the United States. But I am quick to point out that El Salvador is one of the safest countries in the entire world. We have year-round sunshine, traditional family values, and a strong sense of community. I wouldn't want to live or raise my family anywhere else. So while living in El Salvador is not free, for me and my family, it's priceless.